So you guys might be wondering why we're outside for a yeast video. Well, let me tell you. Uh, if you happen to live in the Midwest, and I'm sure you guys know by now I'm in Wisconsin, and it's snowing right now, if you just cracked your one and only ice cube tray into the sink and thought, God damn it, I'm out of ice. How am I going to chill down my wort? Well, let me tell you. Um, you're surrounded by a great way of chilling down your beer. Uh, I'll just come on out here and... Go ahead and scoop up a few of these. I got these like big ass, you know, like gas station cups. I'll just load these bad boys up with some snow, dump that in my sink, and Bob's your uncle, man. We're chilling right on down. So I'm sure this tip isn't very helpful to uh, the viewers out in California or Arizona or whatever, but uh, if you're one of my Arctic brothers, uh, yeah, take it advantage. Okay, guys, the yeast is, or the uh, word is all the way down to, uh, well, about 64 degrees. And uh, for this particular strain, uh, YE says it should be kept between 64 and 74, so we're pretty much right on the mark. Uh, and again, you can see that snow in there, where I use that to chill the, uh, the wort down. Um, again, man, if you guys are in the Midwest, that's a, that's a great way to, you know, get your beer down to where you need it to be. Um, so like I said, we still have our mixing bowl here with Ida 4 in it. We got our whisk, we got our funnel that we're going to be using in just a second. But don't forget to do this. Um, go ahead and take your uh, YE pack. And uh, just go ahead and stick that in there too, uh, so you get the outside of that sanitary as the uh, the uh, yeast is passing over it. So we went ahead and emptied out our uh, jug with the Itafor in it. We're going to open up the cap, get the funnel set up, and uh, I'm sure you can kind of piece together what's going on here. We're just going to simply pour the wort into the jug after we aerate it, because it would be very difficult to aerate with the whisk while it's inside the milk jug, which I'm sure you could just kind of bang around anyway get some air in there but uh, we're just gonna do this so like I said sanitize whisk fresh out of the Ida 4 to kind of fling some of that off and uh, like I mentioned in my all grain brewing series uh, Ida 4 just has to be in contact with something for two minutes for it to be considered nice and clean and also just for kicks uh, while this was cooling down I went on uh, beer tools or uh, uh, beer smith and punched in a half gallon of um, water with a half gallon of uh, dry malt extract in it, the uh, extra light. And uh, the original gravity should be hitting 1.044. So it's kind of a respectable start in gravity, especially for just something that um, is to propagate yeast. So what we're doing here is we're just going ahead and breaking the surface of, uh, of the wort and just whipping in some air. You know, when you boil something, you're really kind of squeezing all the oxygen out of it. So we're just going to go ahead and reoxygenate this solution so the yeast shouldn't have any trouble living inside of it. Um, and then once we finish with that, which will be in just another second, pour this in our jug, pour the yeast on top, and that's about it. Now I said in the other part of the video that a lot of guys use airlocks. Um, if you aren't familiar with an airlock, there's plenty of videos out there that will show you what that is. Uh, they're probably in just about all my other videos for brewing stuff. But essentially, it's just a one-way valve that allows CO2 gas to escape from the inside of a fermentation vessel while not allowing outside air to enter inside the, uh, the vessel. That's good for two reasons. Number one, you don't want outside contaminants getting in. And number two, once uh, beer starts to uh, ferment, you don't want to expose any more oxygen. Then you get uh, oxidation, which is literally rusting. So that kind of bloody metallic taste you get in some beers, uh, that's, that's what happens when they become oxidized. So. Uh, to avoid all that, you just have the one-way valve. So we're just kind of letting this snowy water drip off the outside of our uh, saucepan here. Now with one hand, I'm going to mess this up, watch, but we're just going to go ahead and pour this through our funnel, right into our jug. You can see it looks just like regular beer. I mean, we've just, you know, dissolved some malt extract into water, so uh, shouldn't be too unfamiliar looking. Okay, now uh, you can see we got about, oh, just shy of a half gallon of wort. Uh, we did boil it down, so, you know, of course we lost some volume there. Okay, now we got our yeast uh, smack pack all ready to go. It's nice and swollen up. We know that the, the yeast is viable that way. Um, as long as Y yeast didn't totally screw me and put the wrong yeast in this bag, you know, we're ready to go. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera down for a second. 
I'm going to tear this open. There's a little slit in the corner. It's like, I don't know if you'd call it perforated or whatever you want. Uh, okay, so we got that opened up. Sorry about the shot here, but so we're just going to simply pour this right on into our funnel. You can see it's just milky yeast. Okay, we're going to get all that out that we can. We want our culture to have the best chance of thriving, so we want as many yeast cells in there as we can get. Uh, some guys get really hardcore, man, in terms of calculating exactly how much yeast there is. There's a unit of measure called Play-Doh that some dudes will actually use to figure out exactly how many cells they're talking about pitching. And to be totally honest, they're a bit, a bit beyond me right now, but uh, give it another week or two and I'll be there. But anyway, so we now have our yeast into our wort. I'm going to put the cap on now. Go ahead and just give this a shake. Just let that yeast get up in there. A lot of guys use what's called a stir plate, where they have uh, essentially a box, it'd be something like this, that has uh, something inside that'll spin, that's magnetic, like a magnetic wheel, okay, and then you can put a uh, flask, or like a, you know, like what you'd picture seeing in a lab, like a glass bottle, on top of the stir plate, and they'll put a, uh, it's called a stir bar inside, it's actually just a piece of a magnet, and as it uh, connects to the uh, magnetic revolving wheel on the uh, stir plate, it'll actually cause this uh, stir bar to spin around inside the flask and it'll keep your yeast stirring. The idea is that the constant agitation uh, aids in the growth of yeast. Um, we're not doing all that. We're just very simply putting together a very simple beer, throwing some yeast in it, oxygenating it, and like I said, um, I will literally, and you know, a lot of you purists are probably going to just totally nail me for this, I literally just kind of leave this cracked. Um, and there's so much CO2 billowing out of here, I'm never worried about it. It never really uh, has, has presented to me in any way that I've thought the beer is at any risk of infection. Uh, yeah, and in a day or so, I mean, we'll see this thing swelling, and, and you'll see uh, like a croissant forming on top of the, the word, and you'll see the, uh, the CO2 bubbles rising and falling, and of course, we'll see this nice plumage of yeast developing on the bottom. And uh, by the time we make our beer in uh, about two or three days, we'll have a nice, big, fat, healthy, uh, actively fermenting, colony of yeast. So if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to send them in to me. Feel free to watch lots of other people's videos too. This certainly isn't the most scientific one, but I just you know wanted to have one for Brew Academy just to kind of show you guys how I do it. Um, I've never had any problems with this. I've had actually a lot of success with it. And uh, it's pretty low maintenance in terms of what it takes to put together. It probably is going to take you longer to watch this video than it will to actually just do it yourself. So anyway, guys, uh, yeah, hope to hear back from you, and happy brewing.